Notorious WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange was freed yesterday after spending five years in Belmarsh Prison, a maximum security facility just outside London. Assange, 52, made a deal with US prosecutors which will see him plead guilty in exchange for avoiding extradition and jail time in the US. He will plead guilty to one US spy charge of conspiring to obtain and disclose classified US national defense documents. Assange's website WikiLeaks made headlines around the world in 2010 when it published classified US military information, including about the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. One of the videos filmed from inside a US helicopter showed an airstrike that killed civilians in Baghdad. America has argued for years that these leaks put lives at risk. Assange also faced charges of rape and sexual assault in Sweden, which he denied. He spent seven years hiding in Ecuador's London embassy, claiming the case in Sweden would lead to his extradition to the US. Sweden dropped the case in 2019, but UK authorities later arrested him. Footage showed Assange boarding a plane at Stansted Airport on Monday as he made his way to Thailand. At Bangkok Airport, his plane will refuel before taking him to the Pacific island of Saipan. After making his plea deal with the US, Assange reportedly refused to finalize his bid for freedom inside an American court. He is set to make the guilty plea at the US District Court in Saipan, an overseas US territory. He will appear there at 9 a.m. on Wednesday. After that, he will fly home to Australia, where his wife and brother have said he needs time to recover and be in contact with nature. Assange FaceTimed his wife Stella from the tarmac at Stansted on Monday, and she later told the BBC that he has been in a terrible state for five years. The couple have two children, a five and a seven-year-old. Stella said that Assange will have to pay half a million US dollars to the Australian government to fund his chartered flights home. Of course, I mean, I think that the, the correct uh, course of action from the US government should have been to drop the case entirely. Um, we will be seeking a pardon, obviously. Uh, but uh, the fact that there is a guilty plea under the Espionage Act in relation to um, obtaining and disclosing national defense information is obviously uh, a very uh, serious um, concern from for journalists and national security journalists in general. When we met, he was under house arrest. It will be the first time that I, that I get to see him as a fully free man. And I was just, when I was speaking to him, I said, well, you know, we can walk go for a walk and there will be no no restrictions, no curfew, no, you know, all this is, it's so alien um, to the way we've, we've uh, it's been until now for the past 14 years. It's Wednesday the 19th of June and it's exactly 12 years today since Julian went into the Embassy of Ecuador which granted him political asylum. Protection from persecution, from torture, from a life imprisonment of imprisonment and 12 years on I'm visiting Julian in a high security prison but this this period of our lives I'm confident now has come to an end. And I think that by this time next week, Julian will be free. Okay. Throughout the years of Julian's imprisonment and persecution, an incredible movement has been formed, a movement of people from all walks of life, from around the world, who support not just Julian, and not just us and our family, but what Julian stands for, truth and justice. We still need your help. What starts now with Julian's freedom is a new chapter. I've been very clear as both the Labour leader 
uh, in opposition but also as Prime Minister, uh, that uh, regardless of the views that people have about Mr Assange's activities, the case has dragged on for too long. Yeah. There is nothing to be gained by his continued incarceration and we want him brought home to Australia. And we have engaged and advocated Australia's interests using all appropriate channels to support a positive outcome, and I've done that uh, since very early on in my prime ministership. I will have more to say when these legal proceedings have concluded, uh, which I hope will be very soon, and I will uh, report uh, as appropriate uh, at that time. Mr. Assange has pled guilty to a cause of action under the Espionage Act for conspiracy, um, and he's going to be sentenced in the Northern Marianas, which is a U.S. territory that's near his native Australia. So the presumption is he's going to show up, he's going to plead guilty, he's going to be sentenced to time served uh, for the five years that he's now spent in prison. Um, and he's going to be released. I think that's the that's the best guess from from everyone based on what was released today. Yeah. So I've spoken to his wife Stella and just spoken to his to his father John Shipton. You know, I mean, they both sounded quite shocked. Actually, they they both used the word uh, elated. They feel elated by what's finally happened. You, you know, but you've got to remember this has been a this has been a saga which has gone on since June 2012. I, I actually broke the story of Julian arriving at the Ecuadorian embassy in June 2012. He met his wife, Stella, in the embassy. They got married. They've had two, two young children. So she is now in Australia. She travelled there on Sunday, actually, with her children. They will be reunited tomorrow uh, when Julian arrives in Australia. His father um, similarly has been over to Britain. He, his father lives in Australia, but he makes, has made regular trips to um, Britain to see his son in prison. Went to the High Court uh, last month when the latest case was held. And, you know, they're both, as I said, incredibly elated, in shock. And Stella said she still feels very angry that it's taken so long to free her husband. You know, he's been totally tainted by this. His health is appalling. It'll take a long time for him to recover his health, apart from anything else. And I think the repercussions about jailing a journalist for so long will probably carry on as well. But it is the most astonishing development today. We're still waiting for for the final details of what he's agreed. Um, I think when that's, uh, there's a judge going to sign off the agreement in the early hours, early hours of tomorrow, Wednesday, after that happens and he is then finally free, I think will be it'll be very interesting to see what he has actually admitted, if you like. And I think there'll be a lot of discussion, debates um, yeah, amongst organisations like Amnesty International about what he's what he's admitted, why he should have done that. Um, you know, the actions of the of the American military, which led which led to all of this. There's that side of it. And then the other side of it will be his personal life. Now, I, I suspect he'll just want to be left alone. His, he and his family will live in Australia now, as I understand it. Um, they will still be a family of interest, you know, for a, a long time, I think. And then it, it'll be up to him. You know, his father has just told me he hopes his son will just spend time walking up and down a beach and, you know, enjoying the fresh air. But I, I think Julian will want to quickly get involved in some kind of journalism. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what, what he does going forward.